Number 10. The Handbook of Chemistry and Physics gives solubilities of the following compounds in grams per 100 mils of water. Because these compounds are only slightly soluble, assume that the volume does not change on dissolution and calculate the solubility product of each. So in this case, we have the compound CeIO3,4. They give us a solubility of 1.5 times 10 to the negative second grams per 100 mils of the water. Now, there's a lot going on here, but it's only asking for one thing. It says that we have to calculate the solubility product. And remember, the solubility product is a KSP. So, like any K value, KA, KB, KC, KSPs are always based off of a balanced equation. So that's the first thing we have to do. We have to find the balanced equation. Now, this ionic compound, the CEIO3,4, is a slightly soluble ionic compound. That means that it started off as a solid, and it's going to only slightly dissolve into its ions. So we have Ce, IO3, 4. This is starting off as a solid, and at equilibrium, right, it's only going to break down into a little bit of its two ions, but it's going to do it, so we have to write the equation. What are the two ions here? Well, the split is between the Ce and the IO3. IO3 iodate is a polyatomic ion. Polyatomic ions never um, split up. So this would be between the Ce plus the IO3. Now we just need to find out the charges. What are the ionic charges in the upper right hand corner? Well, we could kind of do it based off of this, right? Or I guess we could do it off of this compound, right? Just so that the ionic equation isn't really messy. This is going all the way back to Gen Chem 1, where we take these subscripts and we crisscross them back up to see the charges. There was one CE for every four iodates. So use those charges. This one crisscrosses up, telling me that the iodate was a negative one. And this 4 crisscrosses up, telling me that the CE was a plus 4. And iodate is always a negative 1 charge. So these charges are correct. So I have CE being a plus 4. And the iodate being the negative 1. Or you could just put a negative. It doesn't really matter. Now we just have to make sure that it's balanced. Well, there's 1 CE. 1 CE. But there's 4 iodates. So I have to put a 4 in front of the IO3. These are charges, so they're going to be aqueous, and now we have a balanced equation. Okay. So if we want, let's write out what the KSP expression is. And the KSP is pretty simple. It's this formula right here. KSP is always equal to the concentration of the products, right? Remember, it's, it's generally products divided by the reactants, but with KSPs, the reactants is always going to be a solid. And remember, no solids are allowed here. So let's just do this quickly. KSP equals the concentration of the two products. So we have the concentration of the CE plus 4 times the concentration of the IO3. But with KSPs, just be careful. Some of them are going to have coefficients, which we have to raise them to. But the CE, there was nothing here. So I don't have to write down that there was a 1 here. But for the iodate, there was a 4 in front. So I have to raise this to the 4th. And maybe I'll put it in red just to show you. Okay. So now we have the general formula, but what is the actual numbers? Keep in mind that these brackets mean concentration, a.k.a. molarity. And molarity is always moles divided by liters. They gave us grams per milliliters. So the first thing we have to do is we have to just convert this into moles divided by liters. So uh, maybe I will just start it over here. So we have 1.5 times 10 to the negative second and that's grams of the initial compound, the CEIO3. 
I O three four, and this is all over one hundred mils. So this is just going back to basics, and maybe I'll just put it over here. Actually, I might not have room. What I'm going to do, guys, is I'm just going to switch these two. So I'm going to put the KSP over here and do the math down here because I think I need a lot of room. Okay. So work with one at a time. I need to convert the grams into moles, and I need to convert the mils into liters. So let's just do the moles first. Times by the ratio. Throw the unit you don't want on the bottom, so grams of the CE. IO34, and remember, it always goes on the opposite side, not necessarily all the time on the bottom. CEIO34, okay? And this is a gram to mole conversion. That's always found on the, on the periodic table. One mole equals whatever the mass of this is on the periodic table. So I have one CE, so 140.1 plus... I have four iodines, so 126.9 times four. And then I have, ooh, I got 12 oxygens, so plus 12 times 16. So pretty big compound, 839.7. That cancels out the grams. And now we're left with the moles, okay? Now I just got to convert these mils. So let's just do one more conversion times by the ratio. Now, in this case, the mills are on the bottom. I don't want them, so they have to go on the top to cancel out, and the liters go on the bottom. Remember, mills to liters, there's always a 1,000 mills per every one liter, and that's how this cancels out. And now we have moles divided by liters, which is molarity. So let's just figure out what that number is. So 1.5 times 10 to the negative second divided by 100, then divided by, again, by 839. 0.7, and then times by a 1,000. So I'll give myself a couple of more sig figs. 1.7, I don't know, 1.786 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity. And that is, remember, this is moles divided by liters, right? But it's the same thing as molarity. Or maybe I'll just put moles over liters. But then when I go back, because remember, this is for the starting material. This is now that concentration, 1.786 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity. Now from here, I could find out what the concentration of these two ions are by looking at their mole ratios. There was one of the whole compound here and one CE. So if these are the same numbers, that means that this would be the same for the CE, 1.786 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity. But now when I come over here, I see that I have a four. So what am I going to have to do? Yeah, I take the number and I just multiply it by four. So in this case, I have four times the 1.786 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity, right? So let's see what that number is. 1.786 times 10 to the negative 4 times 4. Perfect. I have 7.144 times 10 to the negative 4th molarity. And these are your two concentration values that we're now going to plug into this KSP expression. Let's do it. KSP equals. So we have the first one. We have the second one, and the second one is raised to the fourth, because that's what the equation states. So we have the 1.786 times 10 to the negative fourth, and then we have 7.144 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now, you could take your time, plug it in. I'm just going to do it all in one shot, and then we'll get the final answer. So I have that number raised to the fourth, and then I'm just going to multiply it by 1.786 times 10 to the negative fourth. Uh, two sig figs. So if we rounded it, it would be 4.7 times 10 to the negative 17th. KSPs do not have units, so it's just a number. There you go.
Very, very slightly soluble. 10 to the negative 17th. That's crazy. But that's the answer, guys. I really hope this helps. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And I hope you all are having a great day. Keep working hard. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.